I shall not. Look at the last word, want. Somebody say want. The word want means lack. So what he's really saying to me, what David is really saying, because Jesus is my shepherd, I won't need anything. How many of y'all want to get to a place that you know that Jesus got you so much that you don't need nothing in 2023? Will they cry out to God and say, you are a burden lifter. God, you are my shepherd that I don't want for anything. God, you are the head. And I'm not the tail. You are the lifter up of my head. That's how you know and find out about me. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house. See, we got so much creativity in the church. No productivity. We got a lot of minds in the church that are very creative. But they're not producing anything. God never ordained for the world to know everything and we don't. Come on, somebody say amen, right? You may be seated. Thank you, uh, Fresh Fire. I was watching, if everybody give me unabated attention. I was watching, um, what was that, honey? The Dove Awards? I mean, you were watching the Dove Awards. And uh, I began to watch the different uh, performers or singers who had... Uh, came up and performed on stage, but also who had won the awards. And I've been thinking about it since I've watched it. And I did notice one thing that the, uh, there was this one particular ministry, um, and we sing, I think, some of the songs. Do we not, uh, Elder Waukita? Do we sing some Elevation songs? Yeah. And I said to the Lord, and this is my own opinion. I said, Holy Spirit, I said, God, we have a pretty good praise team at the church. We have a pretty good, pretty good praise team at the church. And, and, and don't take this statement the wrong way because it's still a compliment. It might not come out as a compliment, but it's a compliment. It really is. And so I've been praying about what we have in this ministry, the gifts we have here, the talent that we have here. And I've been evaluating in the spirit what a lot of y'all are. I know y'all say, well, it's a lot of people, but most of y'all, I know you by the spirit. No, I'm not in your business like you think. I'm only in your business when God show it to me. I don't follow you home. I don't follow you on Facebook. I don't call your house. I don't drive by your neighborhood. I don't even know where 90% of y'all live. Matter of fact, I don't even know where most of y'all drive. I really don't. It's not that I don't care. It's just not my business. But your spiritual well-being is my business. Because if that's not my business, I don't need the pastor. Because then all you'll have is a administrator. I'm not a administrator. I'm a pastor. The word pastor means long-term, intimate relationship. Which means that sometime God will give me intimate detail about you. Not to judge you, not to slighten you, not to use anything to devalue you. Because I know we in society, we get off the valuing people by throwing dirt on them. And people that do that, they don't think much of themselves. Because if you got to make other people be smaller than you just to make yourself feel good, you really ain't, don't even know who you are. So I don't need that. Somebody say amen, right? I'm pretty good in terms of what I know. But as I was watching this team, and I'm going to get through this quickly, and I was watching the different singers come up and sing and perform, and I watched this group Elevation, then I watched this Hispanic group, got up and sing singers, and I watched this other people to get up and sing and you could feel the presence of God on some of them and on some of them you just knew they were just up singing 
I'm not saying they don't have the presence of God in their life. I'm not being critical. I just know for a fact that there are a couple of the singers that you can feel the presence of God. I do believe that a lot of times in this church, we do feel the presence of God when our praise team is singing. Amen. Amen. Come on, give them a great big hand, right? And I'm, I'm a stickler, Pastor Junior, I'm sure some of y'all. I'm a stickler about when you do something for God, you have to do it at your very best. I, I'm, I am not very kind in terms of uh, just getting up here singing and not caring about making sure that God is using you. Amen. We're not that kind of church. We're, we're not that kind of ministry that we can get up and preach and just do a nice sermon, sing a couple of nice songs, and you go home happy or just say, I just came to church. We want it to be that when you walk in this environment, that God changed your life. Amen. There's something about your life, whether it's healing, whether whatever it is, we want to see the evidence of God or I'll stop pastoring because I don't want to run a church and there's no evidence of God. Amen. And there's more to being evidence of God than just preaching a good sermon. Amen. So let me get back to this real quickly. So when I thought about our praise team, Fresh Fire here, I watched this one ministry. I watched Elevation Worship win all kind of awards. And I said, they seem to always find the right songs to draw people in. And I said, God, we got the same people. Here at Restoration, we got Ella Wakita. We got all these other great singers on the praise scene. They might not be perfect at everything. But, but, but one thing I do know that when they want to, they can bring in the presence of God. I said, but God, there are some in here that said they know they can write songs. But how come they have not written them? Now, and so some will say, well, I haven't been given the chance. And I said, well, God, is it that? He said, well, that's what they believe. But the reason why that you don't see them writing the songs or the songs being able to be presented, he said, because they got to first get their minds renewed. Because the difference between someone that can bring the presence of God and someone that can get people to sing with them is someone who can sing and that's very talented and then someone on the other side who knows how to have their mind renewed constantly with a heaven mindset and then heaven gives them creativity to come up with songs that will bring people to the presence of God. There's got to be more than you can just write a song but your mind hasn't been renewed. If your mind not being renewed wasn't important, God would have never mentioned it in the Bible. Amen. And so I found out that the enemy does not like a renewed mind. Amen. He doesn't like when your mind has been renewed because he understands that when you have a renewed mind, you always think about how you can represent the kingdom yeah. of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. He doesn't want heaven to come to earth. Our, what he said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done. Come on, everybody. What else does it say? I about to say it backwards. How does it go? Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What? Here on earth? Gives us day our daily bread. Yes. Yes. Come on. For what? That's what God is. He's the kingdom. What else, everybody? The power and the glory. When Jesus was here on earth, he represented the kingdom. See, the problem with the church, when your mind has not been, removed, been renewed, it keeps you looking at things from an inferior complex. Even God. You don't see who God is. That's why a lot of times, excuse my expression with us, we sing songs about how blessed we are. We sing about what we got. What God don't gave us. Why? Because our minds have not been renewed. And when your mind is not renewed, it has what? It stays in a mindset of what? Reality. You see everything from a reality standpoint, and you can't see things through faith. You see everything based on what it looks like from a reality, which means that your faith doesn't grow. 
Faith is not a mind thing. Faith is a heart thing. It's not a mind thing. And so if your heart is not in love with God, your faith don't grow. We have too many people trying to outthink God who gave them their brain. How are you smarter than the one that created you? Y'all help me out. That's just dumb to me. To believe that you think you're smarter than God, the one that made you. You can put every major league, Ivory League, Upstale College, Rose Roe Scholars all in one place and put all their education together and it still won't be smart as God. Amen. There's nobody smarter than God. Amen. No, that's not up for debate. Amen. No, not for me. It's not up for debate. Amen. So there's a hostile spirit that wants to keep your mind from being renewed. Like here's the question, right? Now watch this real quickly, right? So what happens when you renew your mind, all right? When you renew your mind, that means every day you ask God to take your mind and to remove anything that prevents you from seeing who he is and what he can do in your life, right? Let's say you got an incident. Let me give you a prime example, right? So here is Deacon Sheldrick. And Deacon Sheldrick, I'm a, we're going to be two people. I'm going to say this quickly, we're going to move forward. Somebody says to you, Deacon Sheldrick, the sickness that you've been going through, God gave me in a dream that he allowed you to go through this so he can get the glory. Huh? Two weeks later, another man comes to Sheldrick, and I say to him, Sheldrick, the Lord said he did not put sickness on you so you can give him the glory. The devil put sickness on you and you need to let the devil know that he can't stay in your life and that you believe what God's word says. Now both of them still try to give God the glory. Well, which one are you going to accept? If your mind has not been renewed, you'll accept the first one. The body of Christ believes that a lot of things God is putting on them. So why do God need to make you sick to prove something? So what is Sheldon going to do? Well, automatically he said, I believe the second one. But if he didn't have the faith, what should he do? He should take the Bible and thoroughly go through every scripture that talks about healing and see where in the world, in the Bible, that God ever said, I got to be sick to give him glory. And once he finds out that it's not biblical, he needs to go back to the person and say, thank you, but I'm going to believe the second one. You ain't got to make him feel bad. You ain't got to rebuke him. You just can stand on the word and say, I read the scripture, and the scripture says what? By his stripes I'm healed of. The scripture said, be beloved above all things, uh, that you prosper being held, even as your soul prosper. Every scripture points to that God does not have to use sickness to make me get his glory. But the only way I can do that, my mind got to be renewed from flesh. If I have a fleshly mind that only look at things from a realistic standpoint, which are facts, I'll accept things that's really not God. The church has accept things that really isn't God. Right? Because this is what the church is doing. Then I promise them to get the scripture. Everybody is waiting on to get to heaven. Watch this. Which means that everybody thinks that God going to fix everything when we go to heaven. So the body of Christ ain't, 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 ain't walking like they used to walk. We used to be problem solvers here on earth. We used, to, we used to be able to come and face the devil and face everything. We don't do that no more because everybody's waiting on heaven. When I get to heaven, this will all be over with. Well, you're missing it because the renewed mind is supposed to tell you that God's will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And you shouldn't be waiting on heaven to do anything. It should be done right now. Where do we get that from? Well, when I get to heaven, God going to fix all this stuff. Well, if he going to do all that, then he had no reason to make us. There was no reason for Jesus to come and die for our sins and to teach us what it's like to walk in a Christ mindset. 
Come on, somebody, right? So what happens when your mind gets renewed? What happens, and we're going to go to scripture, when you allow God to come in and to check your mind and make sure your thinking is kingdom thinking. Because when you decide that you want to walk in a renewal of your mind on a consistent basis, God targets you. Y'all didn't catch that. God literally put you on his target. And he said, oh, there's a renewed mind right there. There's a mind that wants to do heavenly things. I'm gravitating towards that. Holy Spirit, move towards that and bring miracles. Allow them to be used by you mightily because they have a kingdom mindset, which means that they expect things to change. I don't expect somebody to come in church and I lay stand in front of them and they got a disease and I don't expect them to get healed. I do not not expect them to get healed. I expect them to get healed. I don't battle. Well, you know, when they come up, I want to know what you're going to do. No, I automatically get my mind renewed. And I say to God while I'm still, before I get there, God, wait a minute. Before I start praying, do I have the mindset to believe that you can change the situation? The church don't. The church, and I know people don't all get healed because God heals them on the other side. But we should see a lot more healing. We should see a lot more things. We got too many people dying of cancer. There, there is somebody in here right now. You have the creativity in you to come up with something to heal a sickness. God told me that at five something this morning. He said, Gregory, you got a member in the church that I have given them in their mind. Guess what? The formula to a certain disease and they can create it through me. And people will be healed by the millions. I said, God, who is it? He said, I won't tell you yet. He said, because they don't need you tell them. Because their minds are not renewed. If, and if they don't have a kingdom mind, all they're going to look at is all their imperfections. All they're going to look at is their education. All they're going to look at is what they've been done, how their life been doing them, how they rejected, how people don't hurt them. They ain't going to hear nothing about God. They got to first get their mind renewed that know that who they are in Christ and what God has called them to be in spite of their education level, in spite of their marital status, in spite of how much money they got in their pocket. Are they willing to know that I'm still a child of God? So watch this, Romans 8. I'm going to hurry up. Am I saying something so far? I don't know who you are. I wanted God to show me. He normally does. But he said, not right now. They're not ready for it. Because they're still carnal. And he said, the only way they're going to come up with this formula is through the Spirit. I'm going to give it to them, but they have to have a renewed mind, a kingdom mind, a mind that believes me, greater they believe anything, and then I'll give it to them. He said, I don't give a lot of things. He said, even though a lot of Christians do have creativity and a lot of things, but the reason why a lot of it don't manifest because they don't know how to not take credit for something I did. That's what he told me this morning. The body of Christ does not know how to let God use them without taking credit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So in Romans 8, chapter and verse number 5, are y'all with me? Yes. He said in these words, he said, for those who are living according to the flesh, set their mind on the things of the flesh, which gratified the body. But those who are living according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. And guess what the things of the Spirit is? His will and His purpose. How do you know if you're really living with a renewed mind? What do you think about the most? How do you think about things? How do you think about problems? How do you think about a situation that comes up in your life and it needs an answer? How do you get an answer? Do you do reasoning? What's the number one enemy against a renewed mind? Offense. Because offense looks like wisdom. When you walk in offense, it looks just like you're becoming smarter because it makes you judge people. 
It makes you look at everything from offended mindset, which looks like it's wisdom from God. But the only thing about wisdom from, from offense, it doesn't come with peace. So you might know something about somebody and it might make you be offended about what they're doing, but it also makes you lose your peace. And you can be offended and not bitter. Oh. There are a lot of you, some of y'all are battling offense, but you ain't bitter. Because you see offense as getting more wisdom. Oh, I know you now. I know what I'm dealing with now. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with folk like you. And so then what a fist does, it keeps reasoning with you. It keeps coming up with more definition on why you should not forgive that person. It keeps feeding your offended mind. I mean, I just had something ever come up in your head. You ain't seen that person in years. You're supposed to move on past them. And the minute you run into them 10 years later, their fist pops back up. Mm-hmm. 20 years. They ain't touched you since high school. You run into them. You say, hey, but in your mind, what happens? Fits come up. If they done something to you, mind start thinking, yeah, I remember what you did to me back in 19... 19- That's what offense does. Offense makes you think that you're getting wisdom. But what it really is doing is making you earthly, sensual, and demonic. You don't believe me? We'll go to James 3 and show you that one day. So it says, for those who are living according to the flesh, let me keep moving because y'all look at me. Set their minds on the things of the flesh, and I don't want to get offended, which gratify the body. But... <laughs> But those who are living according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit, he, his will and purpose. Now the mind of flesh is death, both now and forever. Why do you think the enemy wants you to walk more in your fleshly mind than in your spiritually mind? He wants you to live a deaf life. The Bible said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. I didn't come to give you death. But because you won't let your mind get renewed. Hmm? Why does it say both now and forever because it pursues what? Sin. A fleshly mind pursues sin. You ever watch people get a breakthrough in church? And you see them three days later look like they never even had a breakthrough? That's because when they got their breakthrough, instead of keeping their mind renewed, they went right back into flesh and went back and pursued sin. It just, you just seen them crying, shouting, thank you, Lord. And then three days later, are they coming to church next Sunday? And you see them, and you, they, everybody looking like, oh, man, I know they're going to break out again. Oh, I know they're going to shout again. And they sitting there, face all frowned up, looking all mean, looking crazy. And you're like, wait a minute, you were just brushed out all over the church. That's because when they left church, they didn't understand the enemy said, look, I've got to make sure I get you to go back to pursuing sin. Because if your mind stay renewed, no telling what you're going to be. He said, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The spiritual well-being that come from walking with God, both now and forever. So he said, if you want to deal with your mind from the flesh, you'll walk with God in death. Which means a lot of things that's supposed to be living in your life will stay dead. Because it takes the life of God to make it work. Amen. There are things in your life right now are not working because you deal with it from a fleshly mindset. You want God to fix something from your fleshly mind. So you see everything from the flesh. God fixed my marriage with his broke down sorry. (laughs) 
What? Did I say something wrong? I don't know how long I can do this horrible human being as a husband. That don't even reach heaven. This already dead when you spoke it. It's already dead. Y'all better get over this thing. God don't answer prayers like that. It's okay for you to say there are things God said, I need you to fix with him or fix with her. But why would God pray your, answer your prayers or insults? Can I pray about you and insult you at the same time and expect God to answer it? That's a fleshly mindset. And so when you're praying and asking God to fix something that is important in your life, you first have to get your mind renewed. So your mind can pray what the word says, even if you ain't feeling it, you praying it because God's word works even when you don't feel like working. As much as I don't, I don't want to call him blessed and highly favored, but I'm going to call him that because I'm calling those things as though they were, not as they are. But I have to have a renewed mindset to do that. Because if I pray in my fleshly mind, I will only pray for my feelings. Yeah. Only pray for my feelings. Thank you, baby. No disrespect. Y'all get me. Once y'all get married, everything is the horriblest thing in the world, but you deal with these old broke-down boyfriend and girlfriend, and you got all this tolerance, you got all this understanding, you got all this love, you got all this peace, you got all this... You're not even in covenant with them, but you find a way to forgive, you find a way to love on them anyway, but then when it comes down to somebody you say that you're in covenant with, you ain't got nothing to say. Okay. He said, the mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuit is actively hostile to God. What's the number one enemy of a renewed mind? Hostility towards God. So he doesn't like when your mind thinks on heavenly things because he knows that that mindset will get a lot of things achieved in your life that he knows he can't. Because he said it does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh living a life that caters to sinful appetite and impulses cannot please God. Amen. Now how does that bother with faith? Because he said without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, what does a carnal mind do? It doesn't make you walk in faith. It makes you walk in your carnality. Because the only thing the devil wants, let me just say this, please don't y'all take this the wrong way. Don't be impressed with your wonderful appetite and how good you are at doing sexual things and you know, and how you can do all this and everybody know your reputation. Because I want you to know the devil don't even care. He is not impressed with how good you are in the bed and what you can do. He is not impressed with that. You know what the devil's worried about? He's worried about your life that pleases God. That's what he is concerned about. He is not impressed. You're impressed with it. But even the one that got you doing ain't impressed with you. The little demon come back to his master, Satan, because he's not omnipresent. No matter what y'all say, Satan can't be everywhere at one time. Only the Holy Spirit can. 
So he's got territorial spirits that have, he put in territories. He's got a spirit that assigned to you. And so when that little spirit go back and report to his master. And he say, master, she's over there and they're having sex. And the master say to them, I already got them doing that. Find me somebody that like pleasing God. Find me somebody that's walking in faith. Find me somebody that will walk by faith and not by sight. He is not impressed with us. Satan is not impressed with our sins. He wants to find somebody that walks by faith that pleases God. That's the one that bothers him. The demon goes back and he says to Satan, I went over to so-and-so house. And he said, what were they doing after I put sickness on them? Satan, you won't believe this. I walked in there. Expected them to be laying in the bed crying. Expected them to be on the phone or texting or emailing or doing whatever on social media, explaining how sick they are. And I walked in there and seen and almost got knocked over because they're in there praising the Lord. They're in there telling you. They're in there. So. They're, they're, oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. They're in there jumping up and down saying I'm healed. They're in there screaming by his stripes. They're in there quoting scriptures all about healing. And I walked in the door. Come on, somebody. Oh! Oh! I had a vision, Kennedy, Tanya. And this lady, Chandra's daughter, was looking in her cabinets. Nothing. She found it. Found one can of beans. She said, baby, we're going to eat today. That's what she tells her daughter. One can of beans. She eats the beans up. While she's heating the beans up, this one messed me up. She's praising the Lord. Why you praise the Lord when there's nothing in the refrigerator, there's only one can of bean in the house, and you can see a praise of the Lord saying, my God, just supply all my needs. Oh, God. I You don't know how much you love God until you broke. You don't know how much word is inside of you until you look around and got nothing. And then all of a sudden, when everybody say you ain't got nothing and serving God like that, you can say to them, <laughs> I, I never seen a righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. Hey! I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No!
I was, can I go a little further? I was praying for you, praying for many of you that I saw that have the ability and the creativity to be successful in entrepreneurship. But your mind's got to be renewed. Because the business will not make it anywhere based on your fleshly mindset. Because you got too many other hangups. So there are a lot of people that can be very successful in business, but they try to run the business. Stand up for me, Reggie. They try to run the business from a carnal mindset. I'm not saying for you to be deep and walk around your business quoting scriptures. I'm not saying for you to be religious. But I'm saying that you need to be able to have a renewed mind so the kingdom can help you to come up with the right ideas that will make your business successful. A lot of you run business and you have the normal gifting, but you have too many things going on in your mind for you to be able to make it go further. You have too many hangups. Amen, right? You ever watch a business, they start off and they're very successful and then all of a sudden they plummet? The people used to be friendly. They used to want you in there. The place was clean. They cared about you coming in. They spoke to you. Customer service was great. And then after a period of time of making money, they don't care no more. Place ain't clean. They on the phone. Why are you sitting there taking your order? Got an attitude problem. They're not kingdom. Because the natural man of you would take over on your standards. So it doesn't make you continue to walk in the spirit of excellence because you don't know what it's like to be blessed for more than a little bit of time. So a lot of folk have businesses until they get started seeing failure because they don't know how to walk in longevity of blessings. They don't know how to stay around and see success with a business, even when it has some low points. Amen. Most of us walk away from things when it stop producing because we don't see no way of it getting better. That's because of a carnal mindset. Amen. The reason why business stay around, you can't have Chick-fil-A across the street and he don't fail three times and had to start four times, but imagine if he did not have a transformed mind. Amen. Imagine if his mind had not gotten renewed, he would have quit after the first plane crash that killed his two brothers. True and Kathy flunked four times, three times. And finally on the fourth try, when he came up with the chicken sandwich, he started becoming successful. By the time he died, he was worth $4 billion. Now he's worth more than that dead. Because the sons kept the legacy. But when you are carnal and God gives you a business idea, and you look at it and the presentation is good, but you can read it good enough to know that this is not a business idea that wants to stay around. It's a business idea that wants instant gratification. Amen. Because you can see in the plan that there's not a, a mindset that has been renewed to say, not only am I going to start a business, because I'm not starting the business to get rich, I'm starting the business so I can be a blessing to the community, so because what I have to offer... You hiring all your friends that don't know nothing. Amen. They can't take you nowhere. Amen. They don't know more as you know. Amen. So let me say this to you, Reggie, real quick. I'm going to move on. Am I saying something today, somebody? Yes, See, that's why we... Somebody said to me, other day, how you stay around 33 years? Amen. I said, 33? I've been, I've been doing this since 1980. What are you talking about? I've been doing this almost 44 years. This, I've been doing this because I've learned that I have to keep my mind renewed. Every time I look at something and the people act a certain way or the church get a certain way and I start looking at it, if I look at it from a natural standpoint, it'll make you want to go and retire somewhere. Amen, right? And take a pass of June, let's go fishing somewhere. Somebody say amen. She ain't going to go anyway. Somebody say amen, right? They don't fish at the Ritz Carlton. You got to leave that alone. Oh, look at her. She said, I know y'all ain't laughing hard. 
But let me give you this prophetic word, Reg. So I'm, I, I'm praying, and I saw you this morning in the vision. I saw a lot of people. But God told me to stand you up because you can take it. And so <laughs> you don't see it at all. But there is a new level of your business that God said is getting ready to happen. And the new level is going to make you be attracted to a greater level of people. Even though you're attracted by former athletes and you have schools and other places for your motivational speaking. But there are now a level of company that wants to bring you in at a much higher level, which is a much higher level price market, a much higher level payment. And so God told me to tell you, get in his presence. Ask him to renew your mind and to show you anything that will hinder you from the next level. And God said, I'll show it to you. And then I'll put in place there what you need for the next level because it's show coming. Somebody say amen. Come on, amen. All right. So let's move quickly. Second Chris 11, 14. And there are many others. Your hindrance is because you're very good in your gift, but you're not very good in your customer service. Y'all stop owning businesses and the customer telling you what they want and you telling the customer what they're going to get. I didn't pay you to tell me what I want. If I need you to tell me what I need to fix, then you tell me. But if I ain't asked you to fix it, you do what I say. A lot of y'all running businesses trying to control the people that's coming to you to get a business. You need a renewing of your mind. You need to get all of that, that whatever you're dealing with, that rejection, that low self-esteem, that controlling spirit. That you have to always be in charge of everything and everything got to be ran by you. A business won't go nowhere with a one-person mindset. That's good. You're trying to own a business, but you don't work well with people naturally. Well, who are you going to hire? Scrooge. You got to have a spirit that people want to work for you. You can't get in arguments with everybody. Amen. How you work for other people will determine how somebody will work for you. Amen. You always give your boss hell. Don't open up a business because you're going to have a hell business. <laughs> Second Christians 11, 14. Am I saying something today? Yeah. See, most people think that meekness is weakness. But I'm going to tell you now, don't ever pursue wisdom. Don't ever pursue wisdom without meekness. Amen. Don't ever ask the Lord to give you more wisdom and you don't have no meekness. Amen. You, know, you, you, you know what meekness is? Most people think it's a weakness, but it's not. All meekness is is a willed strength. Let me tell you what that means. You ever seen the horses jump over the fence in these events? I forgot what they called it. That's right. See, my son knows all that stuff. So what is it called again, sir? Equestrian. Equestrian, right? So you watch these horses, right? And they're able to keep going and jump over these fences, right? But then you watch and see sometimes they don't jump over the fence, right? Now, they have the capabilities to jump on the fence every time. But they will their strength to submit to the one that's telling them to jump. Most people think if I'm meek, I'm being controlled. If I'm meek, I'm controlling myself. I take my strength and say to my strength, you will submit to the authority that's over me and you will use your strength when they tell you. Most of the time, somebody trying to, you're trying to control me. Ain't nobody trying to control you. You can't even control yourself. Second Corinthians 11, 14 says, and no wonder since Satan himself masquerade as an angel of light. 
Wow. The other version said, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Why does Satan turn himself into an angel of light? Because he knows if he appears in darkness, you will know better. Amen. That's why I have to put on the skies. And the only way you can see when Satan is disguising himself as an angel of light, your mind has to be transformed. If you look at Satan from a natural perspective, you'll be fooled. You'll be deceived. That's why a lot of us have had people that you thought was angels from God and it was angels from the devil. I've never had that experience before. You thought they were really some great people and then they came to your life and found out this is a demon from hell. Come on, let me, let me see somebody know that. Some of us experienced that, right? right? That was a Satan turning himself into an angel of light. He presented himself very well. So let me show what I'm talking about. We're going to close the 17th chapter of Matthew. I skipped some scriptures on purpose. And so I want to read this and we're going to close on this one. Amen. I say this a lot of time to God, and I'm asking some of you to think about it and consider it. I'm not forcing anyone to do anything, so don't sit there in your mind saying anybody's going to tell you what to do. We already talked about that. So you don't have to say it in your mind because I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you from my own experience what works. I'm probably the most forgiving person there is. I'm not bragging. I just am. I'm probably one of the people who say, well, don't, you don't have to tell people that. Yes, I do. I'm probably one of the most loving people, most understanding people. I've been that way all my life. I ain't going to deny that. Well, are you bragging? No, I'm just, that's who I am. That's just like you talk about who you are. You love to brag to people. I don't take no junk. Well, I can tell you that I'm one of the people that took a lot of junk. I don't feel bad about it. I made some bad decisions because I, my heart moved quicker than my mind. Amen. But I don't regret being a loving person and I don't regret being a forgiving person. Because I know with me, some of y'all can operate like that, but I know with me offense doesn't work in my heart because it, does, it grieves God in my life. It might not grieve God in your life. Some of y'all could walk around and be offended for 20 years and don't bother you, but me, I can't walk around one day. So I practice this. I give up the right. I say this to myself. I give the rights up to be offended. I say that all the time. I give up my rights to be offended. I give up my right to hold on forgiveness. You can hold all you want to against me, but see, I'm the one that got to stand before God for myself. So you want to walk around and you want to be offended, you want to walk around and try to devalue me, just don't do it to my face. Come on, somebody say amen. That's you and God. Somebody say it with me. I give up the right. Somebody say, I give up my right to be offended. Now, now, don't get mad when tomorrow somebody tries you and tries to offend you. <laughs> so let me tell you what a renewed mind is, right? See, a renewed mind means that I'm going to repent about the mind I had. And then when I repent about the mind I had, then what happens? After I repent about the mind I was walking in, I reconnect with God. Because what I tell God is, since I repented, that means I turned all the way around from what I was doing or the way I was thinking, and now I can reconnect to you and guess what? And follow the way you think. That's what a renewed mind is. You repent from the kind of mind that is not of God, and you repent to the point that you can reconnect with him. And you say, okay, God, how do you think about this problem and how I think about the problem should be different. And I'll follow your way instead of my way. You wouldn't be so judgmental people if you had a renewed mind. Amen. Because what a renewed mind would tell you is, uh-uh. You don't done worse than them. Amen. How many y'all know for a fact? How y'all there? How many y'all glad God ain't told everything you did? Amen. Don't sit up here like you high and mighty. Amen. You don't done some stuff you don't want nobody to know. Amen. Anybody with me? Let's see some other folks. Anybody with me? All right then. Be quiet. Some of y'all doing stuff now, y'all want nobody to know nothing about. 
Let's close on this. Am I saying something today? How many are ready to reconnect to God with your mind? How many know for a fact, I need my mind to be renewed? Wave your hand and say, I need my mind to be renewed. Come on, say it. I need my mind to be renewed, right? I need to repent the way I see things. I need to repent the way I respond to things. If it's not the way God wants me to respond. That's why you're always going off. You need a renewed mind. Why you go off so much? Why are you always angry? My son here, he's teaching young men how to be respectful. He's teaching them how, why, why, right? Because his thing is, you say, respect will do what? Take you a long way. So he's teaching them young. Respect. Even his own daughter, he said to her, and she was answering, I, I don't, it didn't really bother me, because I'm a papa girl, but he said to her, and she said something, and I said, you listen to that? She's like, yes, and she didn't bother me, and his thing was, no, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just said that to him, right, because, you know, what, what? What was he doing? He was already telling her, this is the success of your future. He was already renewing her mind at seven to get prepared because the more people you honor, the more honor will come to you. That's what he was doing. Come on, somebody. Thank you. So watch this, right? How many of y'all ever been, how many of y'all ever, I'm going to hurry up, I promise. How many of y'all ever watch God transform your life? Yeah. All right? How many of y'all watch God some transform some things in your life? Yeah. All right? Do you know how your life got transformed? Yeah. Your mind helped it. Yeah. You can't have a life of transformation, transformation until you got a mind that's been transformed. Yeah. Because if your mind don't get transformed, it won't let your life stay transformed. So if you keep that mind the way you think, the way you respond, the way you act, don't get mad when your life don't have a lot of transformation. Amen. Oh my God. Oh Fate, function, out of the eternal. It does not function in earthly things. Faith functions out of things that are eternal. Want to see things happening in your faith? You got to fix your mind. You got to transform your mind, especially when you have been redundant. You've been doing the same thing the same way and seeing the same results. It's like looking and driving around the corner and there's a sign that says cliff but says there is no railing and said uh, slow down and you decide to step on the gas with no guardrails and if you go over the cliff and kill yourself you got nobody but yourself to blame because you refuse to change the way you think you refuse to change the way you look at stuff you refuse to change the way you respond you refuse to change the way you talk and how many of y'all know some of us, we've been away for so long that we got to get a transformation in our mind because that thing is stuck in us now. Yeah. And it's not good when you tell people, that's just how I am. And you will be upset if they say, then stay as you are. Amen. Non-productive. Amen. Come on. All right, I'm done. Matthew 17, 1 through 4, and I'm done. Thank y'all for your patience today. All right. Here's a secret I had to learn the hard way because it's sometimes called false humility. When you try to be too humble, I live that life, and God's like, I'm not impressed with that. So you, you, let me tell you, a transformed mind will let you hear God's truth. A mind that ain't transformed, you ain't open the truth. You get offended. You get bothered by the teaching because you're like, huh, ain't nobody going to say that to me. Ain't nobody talking to you. We talk to the transformed mind. 
We ain't mad at you for not wanting to change. I'm talking to the folk that want to change. You ain't making me mad. Thank you, sir. So watch this. Uh, one of the hardest things, please don't take this wrong way, that the African-American community as a whole has a problem with, with God. Set up straight your seats so I can make you mad. Because if you're going to be mad at this sermon, I want to be able to see your face. Because you got to let me know you don't like this comment, even if you don't show expression. I can see you. We still don't see God as our father. We see him as the slave master. Most of us do not believe that we're sons and daughters. We think that all we are is a servant. So when you have a servant mentality, it doesn't let you ask God for stuff you think you don't deserve. The church I grew up, you couldn't even talk to God. It was considered sin. Then I went off into the military, found out, and talked to God about a lot of stuff. I found out God can handle my lament moments. I found out when I was talking crazy, God was just sitting there listening to me. He might have even been laughing. Look at this crazy joker right here. But never, <laughs> but he had enough love to say, I ain't going to laugh in your face. I'm sure when I laughed, he was laughing. Somebody say amen. I know God be laughing at y'all sometimes. Half the stuff you be saying, half the stuff you be speaking, half the stuff you be talking about. Don't think God don't laugh. I'm just going to quit life, God. <laughs> I just don't feel like nothing going to get no better, God. God. <laughs> Six days later, <laughs> Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, the brother of, of James, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Out of the 12 disciples, Jesus decided to take these. Come on, Pastor Barry and uh, Wayman and Ray. And y'all play softly for me. Let me do this real soft. I'm going I'm to minister this one part here. And I hope this bless somebody. So Jesus decided to take the three out of the, nine, out of the 12 up with him. They said the, they don't know exactly the name of the mountain, but me and the research said it was called Mount Moran. It was 3,900 feet up in the air. He took them 3,900 feet up in the air by themselves, just him and them. Talk about a transformed mind. Watch this. Please pay attention. And his appearance changed dramatically in their presence. Now, you got to realize Jesus hadn't died yet. He hadn't went to glory. This is still why he's here on earth. When you look at the this, this statement, it says six days. What it really means in Greek means that a week later. That's why it says after six days. That means a week later. So a week later, he takes him on a high mountain by himself. His appearance changed dramatically and the presence. And his face shone with heavenly glory, clear, bright like the sun. His clothing became white as light. Can you imagine being in church? Or being at a prayer meeting and you're bored and all of a sudden you're there with Jesus and he transformed himself so light, so bright that you can't hardly see. You can't tell me that they ain't going to do something to you. Now why is he doing this? Because he's trying to crystal change He's trying to change the way they think from their mindset. 
Watch this, please, y'all watch. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. And behold, Moses and Elijah appears to them. Wait a minute. Jesus, remember now, he's not died. He's still in his flesh. But God allows his glory to come on him and transform him. But Moses and Elijah appears from heaven. Now, it's been 1,400 years since Moses has been on earth and 900 years since Elijah has been on earth. God allows them to come. So Moses and Elijah appears to them talking with Jesus. Huh? When Jesus transforms himself, I mean, he, he brings Elijah and Moses from heaven to come talk to him. I don't know what they were talking about. Then Peter began to speak and said to Jesus, watch how when your mind has not been transformed, how you miss things that are spiritually. When your mind ain't been transformed, you can't see what God's saying in the spirit. Even if he demonstrates it, it still makes you miss it. You don't believe me? Watch this. Peter began to speak and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good and delightful. Oh my God, auspicious that we are here. If I wish, if you wish, watch what he says. Oh my gosh. I will put up three sacred tents here. Look at this. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. That's total misdiscernment. When your mind has not been renewed, it makes you miss what God is trying to do. There are a lot of things that God has tried to do in your life from a spiritual perspective, but your carnal mind won't let him do it. You don't see it. And then when you see it, you come up with the wrong revelation. That was the wrong revelation. Why was the wrong revelation? Watch what God does next. While he was speaking, behold, a bright light overshadowed him. A voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased and delighted. Listen to him. Not them, him. That is a rebuke to Peter and the other disciples. They say, I brought him in to talk to Jesus, but I didn't brought him in to equal it with Jesus. Who have you brought in because your mind has not been transformed and now they feel like they're equal to the Jesus in your life? When your mind has not been transformed, you don't even know how to have a relationship with nobody because you start putting them before God. Ah, oh, Lord, I can't never do nothing right. Oh, shut up. Please stop that lying. Anybody said you could never do nothing right? That what we're saying is do it right. When disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them and said, get up and be not afraid. Do not be afraid. Look what happened. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. God said, let me fix this. God makes a public announcement, said to them, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. I'm not talking about Moses. I'm not talking about Elijah. I didn't allow them to come and appear to Jesus so you could start worshiping them and equally them to Jesus. I didn't bring people in your life and you start worshiping them and equally them to Jesus. I didn't give you somebody that you like or fall in love with and the next thing you know, they're more important than Jesus in your life. I did not. But the only way you could see that without getting offended, the only way you could stop being mad is your mind got to be transformed. Because from your natural perspective, I'm in love. I love this so much. Oh, God. And people just don't want me to be happy. Oh, blown it. Your mind needs to be transformed so you know how to have a relationship. And nothing wrong with loving somebody, but it is something wrong with worshiping them. Amen. And how do you know when you worship somebody? When they're your every thought. They disrupt every phase of your life. You can't even function. Come on. 
Come to Jesus. I'll close on this. Listen. Do you know what happens? Look at me, everybody. Do you know what happens when you don't let your mind get transformed? You become familiar with your thoughts. And when you become familiar with your thoughts, you want to respond to your thoughts through familiarity. Which means that you get stuck. How many of y'all know for a fact that you're probably stuck in some thoughts and been stuck in some ways for a long time because you don't got too familiar with them and now you don't made them be the thoughts instead of the thoughts of God. You ever watch people that get too familiar with you and they lose respect? Some of y'all don't got so familiar with your thoughts that you don't lost respect for the thoughts of God. You're not open to spiritual thoughts. You're too familiar with your wife. You're too familiar with your husband. But ain't I supposed to be familiar with them? Not in the sense of familiarity. To the point that it makes you become dishonorable. Father, I thank you today. Thank you. When I'm trusting God to move forward, I have to do what they call a thorough investment in examination. When I'm trying to get God to change some things in my life, I have to do what they call a thorough inve- investigation. I cannot allow Christine to let myself keep looking at things I'm trying to fix or get God to fix to look at it from the same mindset. So I have to do what they call a thorough investigation. I have to examine the way I've been seeing things. I have to examine the way I've been responding. I have to examine the way I've been looking. And I have to do a thorough investigation and say, why do I still speak that person the same way? God did not give you excuse to mistreat somebody just because they hurt you. But if your mind don't get renewed and you're still living off what your mama ain't took and what your daddy ain't did and what your sister ain't put up with, you ain't married to your sister, your mama, your daddy. You're married to who you're married to. I'll clap. I'll clap. you're supposed to be a Christian you're supposed to be a Holy Spirit filled person and if you don't look at yourself and say is this whenever look at a thorough investigation and an examination does this please God because that's what a kingdom mind does that's what a transfer mind does it's about pleasing God and sometimes it takes instruction that you don't like He said, some of y'all, as we close, you won't leave what you are, where you came from, how you been raised, what you ain't going to put up with, how long you been hurt, how long they done done it to you, how long it done happened, how long, you know, you don't felt what you felt. Because when it comes to it, God must be not smart because ain't no way in the world God would let me walk in, make me walk in love with somebody who done done what he done did to me, just like I done done the for what I done done to them. Oh, I forgot about that. That's right. Because I ain't never done nothing wrong to nobody. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You ain't never done nothing wrong to nobody. You ain't never hurt nobody. Ain't nobody ever been done wrong by you. You've been the perfectest person in the world. Father, thank you today. I receive a renewed mind right now. If you're with me today, come on, say amen. If I ask you to take my mind. There's somebody here today as we close that your mind is stuck. It's stuck on what you've been through. It's stuck on what you've been hurt by. It's just stuck on just stuck. And God said, I got so much more for you than your hurts. 
I got more to offer you than your pains. I got more for you than your aggravation and your frustration, your depression, your oppression, your panic, your anger, your offense. I got a transformation for your mind that will get you on track to receive the things and do the things that will increase the kingdom, but also will increase in your life. But are you willing to stay stuck? Are you willing to live in the hurt? Are you willing to keep living in the pain because you've gotten used to it? Now it's a sedative to you. I like being in pain. I like being angry. I like staying offended. I like it. I eat it like I eat dinner and breakfast. I wake up every day knowing that I got something else that I can find on that person. I got more stuff being fed to my mind telling me, yeah, and this is the reason why you still should stay mad. And this is the reason why you still should be disrespectful. And this is the reason why you still should act the way you act. And don't give them nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't burn yourself out. Don't be doing stuff. And don't get nothing in return. That devil is a liar. Do I have anybody here today that don't know Jesus? Anybody here today that don't know him as your Lord and Savior? Anybody here today maybe knew him and then you pulled away from him? Today is your day. To anybody, today is your day. Come on, put your hand together. Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord, somebody. Bless the Lord. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house.